our special guest today, Professor Dad Ik from Ayuka. And he will tell us about the NUT space times. Professor Dadik is a known expert on many in many areas of, of general relativity, including exact solutions to, to the Einstein equations. So uh, uh, this will be subject related to, to the existence of to, to the exact solutions. The, the floor <coughs> is yours. <laughs> Okay. okay. Thank you very much. And it's a great pleasure to visit University of Warsaw. And more so because we uh, proposed to do it a couple of times, but it didn't materialize. But this time it did. So it's, I'm really. Uh, very grateful to Jerry for organizing the seminar. <clears throat> and uh, of course, to the, my generation of uh, relatives, uh, the war size is identified with Andrews Trotman. And so with my reverence to him, and we have a few of my old friends, like Andrzej Kredensky and, and Mark Demensky. He once said that he will join in online, but it's, it's wonderful to be here. <clears throat> OK. Now, Zelzi said that, uh, well, this part is true. I do bits and pieces of many things in general relativity but really don't know very well anything. So that's, so the, so is the situation with the exact solutions. And particularly we have an uh, expert like Andrew sitting here. So I won't claim much about it. So what we have is that something about the Karnat uh, space time. Now we all know that not space time is one of the most enigmatic solutions of Einstein's equation. It is, it has radial symmetry in the sense that the Riemann curvature depends only on the radial coordinate. It has, doesn't depend on the angular coordinates. And it is asymptotically non-flat. So, uh, my friend, <clears throat> uh, Lyndon Bell, you always used to say that the nut solution is the most general radially symmetric uh, vacuum solution, where the asymptotic flatness condition is, is lifted. And you heard that. <clears throat> Then you also uh, have a curve version of it, the Carnot solution. Now, when you come to the Carnot, there the nut charge and the mass charge, they sort of appear could be really understood as gravoelectric charge, that is the mass is a gravoelectric charge, and that the nut parameter behaves like a gravomagnetic charge. And people call this dual. Yeah, so I'm coming to work with the duality. So that's the moment you have this, then you would expect that there must exist a duality relation between them. Now, <clears throat> this thing was not explicitly shown uh, exactly, but uh, 
About 20 years back, I have a colleague from Uzbekistan, Jafar Turakolov, who visited Ayuka. And so we started working. So he said, okay, let us start with an axially symmetric uh, space time and then ask that the Hamilton Jokov equation and the Klein Gordon equation are separable. And then let us try to find what is the most general metric you have. And the metric you that comes out has, and then with the separable equations of motion, the kernel turns out to be the most general vacuum solution, not only vacuum, electro vacuum solution. You can put the electric charge as well. And that, that's, that's the paper we uh, published in Classical and Quantum Gravity. And that's where we also realized that this could be really looked at as a gravitational dion. The having the both the electric uh, gravitational charge as well as the magnetic gravitational charge. And the thing which the, the solution which we had in this particular coordinates system had this invariance. And the invariance was that if a for discrete invariance, uh, transforms you have an uh, I times L where L is the magnetic system, the nut parameter charge, and the mass, and the radial coordinate and the angle coordinate. So lambda is an angle coordinate. A is a constant of a dimension of uh, length, like your rotation parameter for the curve. Now, under this transformation, the current metric we obtained is invariant. And I would say that this invariance got revealed in the particular coordinate system, we obtained the solution. Because otherwise, the Carnot solution was known from the newman demansky class of solutions, but this invariance was, was not, not noticed. So that's, so the, the reference for this, if you could say, is the, this is Jafar Turakula. Huh? itself, you have a classical and quantum gravity. Oh. <clears throat> what does it mean that Kerman is invariant? Pardon? What does it mean that it is invariant? You get the same metric. You have in the metric, you make this transformation. Yes. So you change mass to uh, the nut and nut to mass. And similarly, you change the corresponding coordinates. For the mass, the conjugate coordinate is the radial coordinate. And for the nut, the, it's an angle coordinate. So it is true even for the Tobner. But I thought the nut and Tobners are the same, isn't it? To, but car is hmm? car, car, you need a rotation yeah. for for this. <laughs> yeah. So this this. So so I cannot have between a Schwarzschild and the nut. Yeah. It's a vector from the rotational point of view. It's not a scalar, but L is a scalar. And you know, so, so exchanging between angular momentum and the dual mass is, is a rather strange operation. 
Well, it is a strange operation. Of course, the point what we are saying is the open question here is that this is the discrete transformation we have right now. Can we, and this we have not been able to find, can we find a continuous transformation? And that's the, that's the open question. Uh, so that's uh, uh, two seven six five, and this was two thousand two. You have it yeah. and the other one was So this the thing you so you get this invariance, <clears throat> and another thing related to this thing is uh, that you can see uh, some Carnot duality, which we will demonstrate. So what happens is that you have a. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, so you have uh, two functions really. One is a function of R, and I will call them as your f minus u square, and another is a function of angle, and that I will call as uh, g minus a square v square. Now. This is a function of angle alone, and this is a function of R alone. Here you have F is R square plus A square, and G is A square lambda square minus A square. Now, the curve is defined when FR which is your f minus u square is equal to twice mr. And the nut is defined, well, nut, nut with the m zero and a naught zero with a g as a function of, now, uh, and so, here g lambda is zero for this, and for uh, for the nut radial function is zero, and the g lambda is of which is your g minus a square v square equal to twice l a lambda. So what you have is under this transformation, you can, when the, the angle function is zero and the radial function is defined as two MR, that gives you the cut solution. Otherwise, when the radial function is zero and the angle function is given as two L, L lambda, that characterize the nut solution. So what generally you would say that you would come from this that I'm going to I times uh, L and R going to I times A lambda, you can come go from curl to massless rotating nut and, and the reverse. From the massless rotating nut, you can come to the cut thing. <clears throat> now, let me 
to make it more specific, the solution we obtained was the form this. T square equal to A times DT plus BD phi square minus U square minus B square V square over U square, no, uh, over A times dr square over u square uh, <clears throat> plus d lambda square over v square and plus u square v square d phi square where as i said u is a function of r v is a function of lambda and let us say that a is defined as u square minus b square v square upon f plus g b is defined as b over f v square plus g over b square u square upon u square minus b square v square and f is r square plus b square and g is b square lambda square minus b square <clears throat> that's this and so the u function here which is function of r alone will be r square minus 2mr uh, plus p and v squared is a function of uh, b square v squared is a function of lambda alone and that is minus b square lambda square plus twice b l lambda plus q b square and you have p is equal to two times uh, is b square q so p B, Q, these are all constants. Now with this, the invariance is this, that if I interchange mass and the net parameter, I interchange the radial and angle parameter and P going to B square Q if one <coughs> P. Which actually, if you do these things in here, what it, it takes you is it, it takes V square to B square V square and vice versa. Similarly, it takes f to minus g and vice versa and it takes u square minus b square v square to its negatives minus u square minus b square v square now with this so this can immediately see under this transformation that's what will happen this under this transference, A remains invariant. So whatever the value of A is goes to A, B goes to B. And U square minus B square, V square over 
u square dr square goes to u square minus b square v square over v square d lambda square. So that's what. So what what happens is this these things interchange themselves and this you have and then you find everything. So this is the invariance uh, V. Now that's what I said. It was on, in this coordinate system, this this invariance became visible. We, we, what was revealed. However, we can now transform this to the familiar Borlinquist coordinates as well. And to go to the familiar Borlinquist coordinate, Let's identify <clears throat> so <clears throat> first consider the things like the b square times q is a square minus l square. So new things you define, and b square is a square plus l square, and you say phi is equal to b over a phi bar uh, e equal to t bar and you have a lambda bar as b over a lambda now we say that and identify this the b lambda the angle coordinate then is L plus A cos theta. That's the, the familiar thing you would obtain. <clears throat> and with this, then you see what will be R square. You had a, a U square this year. So that is R square minus 2MR uh, plus P. This will uh, Go go over to R square minus two MR plus B square Q, and which is substituting for B square Q or otherwise, you have R square minus two MR minus L square plus A square. This is your familiar delta. The Delta of the Carnot. Think you 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 get this, yeah. <clears throat> and uh, your and b square v square will be minus b square lambda square plus twice b l lambda plus b square of q and this will go over to a square sine square theta again theta sum the thing <clears throat> and d lambda we know would be minus a over b sine theta d theta now under this transformation, I'm going to I times L and your R going to I times L plus A cos theta. So you have your curve, we have our Carnot metric, uh, T square delta over rho square dt minus, let's say, <clears throat> uh, p d phi, I'll define this for a minute. Then you have minus sine square theta over 
rho square, you have an R square plus A square plus L square, D phi minus A DT square. And then you have your minus rho square over delta dr square minus rho square d theta square. Where delta is the delta of the curve, the curve not sure what you have here. Uh, and the p is, is a sine square theta uh, minus twice L cos theta. Now under this transformation, what what's, what is you immediately one thing you could see that rho square is R square plus A square uh, uh, L plus A cos theta square goes over to minus rho square because L plus A cos theta goes to I times R and R square goes to I times L cos theta. So what you, do you go to this, this, uh, this, this thing? So with this immediately you will see that these things transform to each other. Similarly, this term and this term transform to each other. So this will transform. So P equals theta, this under the transformation will uh, go over to your, uh, well, where is this? Uh, A times, a times B is uh, R square plus A square plus L square. So you, you will see that here that P, this R square, plus, so that's what you, will come from here. And A square sine square theta will give you the delta to give you here. And so you have that system. So you, you see that the, uh, Thing is, uh, <clears throat> it so even in the familiar Borlinquist coordinate, uh, the metric, Carnot metric, remains invariant under these these transformations. And now. Yes. To generalize the information for the Weiss for the solution for parameters. Then perhaps it is not invariant, but it would be interesting to know what kind of parameter you get. So, I just did not put in, but Carnuman is trivial. We can introduce the charge here, and that. No, the well, no, 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 so that we have not tried. And uh, I, I don't know, and most probably what your anticipation is correct, that with those more, more parameters, you, you, it may not be. Oh, Podol, Podolsky, yeah. So that's right, that, that, that may not. many more parameters, there is topological constant. Yeah, there's acceleration. There is acceleration, but acceleration, everything is very complicated. I know. That's right. So I, I think the new parameter, the non trivial new parameter, is only the acceleration. Right. And because it's a cosmological constant. Cosmological constant, probably, could you, you can handle this, yeah. But, uh, uh, but not. Uh, Oh, well, electric charge, you can. And yeah, I have only one problem with this magnetic charge, people. <clears throat> you see, you cannot have both electric and magnetic charge in Maxwell theory simultaneously. 
you can have either electric charge or magnetic charge. Because you see that one charge requires four equations, both the divergence and occurrence. So, yeah. so that gives you, yeah, I have an electric charge, then I have a usual four set of equations. If I have magnetic charge, I have an, a, it's a dual four set of equations. So when you want to have an electric and magnetic charge together, we are now considering a system of eight equations. And I don't know how are you going to uh, handle this with your Einstein Maxwell generalized TMU nu for both electric and magnetic part and their dynamics through, through the field. I, all I, what I, would say, I would say is that yes, you should have an, so from that perspective, this solution gives you that gravity uh, allows you to have both electric and magnetic charges together simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Of course, we did so on complications, but that this is a, a self-consistent system where you have both the uh, electrogravity charge and magnetogravity charge uh, together, and you have an exact solution of the uh, Einstein, Einstein equation. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> so, okay. So essentially, this is the, uh, this is what I'm really trying to communicate to you. So that's that. Now the question is that is there's uh, many things which we don't understand or things which are open. And one of the most important question which came up uh, right in the beginning in this discussion is that can we find a continuous transformations in this? And uh, probably yes or no, I don't know. Uh, on the other hand, let me, so now I list a few of the more questions. Let this thing go up and go. Uh, let me throw this down, yes. Oh. oh, this is a miracle. Something happened without me messing up. <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> hey, you are going to, you are going to my. So, so, so just to repeat that one thing which we want is that the Karnat's, uh, this, any way to get to the, uh, your uh, like continuous group transformers for this invariance. Are there a general thing about which we know for spherical symmetry in general, uh, but also with the nut symmetry in the nut space time? The interesting thing is in a spherical symmetry to find an equation, uh, vacuum solution, you really need to solve only a one first, first order equation. And it turns out that that remains true even when you have the nut, nut space time. And the reason for that is this, that for, for any vacuum solution, you, uh, you are asking for a solution of the GAB zero, or if you are talking about the low log theory, then you will say some 
that will be zero, which is has a quadratic terms here. Then, <clears throat> so first thing which you we say is that it should satisfy the null energy condition. What we the demand is the GTT equal to GRR. <clears throat> and this, of course, you can have a uh, cosmological constant. Now, this is a linear equation. Uh, sorry, this is a first order equation. Which can always be solved. No problem with that. Now, my question is the solution of this equation, this linear uh, first order equation, is a solution of the is a vacuum solution. The all other G, G, G we also satisfy. And why is that? That is because the G theta theta is some 4 over R DDR of GTT plus GTT or something. Let me say that I'm not copying things right. Yeah, it's exactly right. <clears throat> so that's what you have. So now, so you have a solution of this, and you want this equal to, should be equal to lambda. Since GTT, this is a solution of the GTT is always a constant. So this is zero, and this is satisfied. So G, G theta is equal to GTT is equal to same as lambda. It's satisfied. So that, and so this is not in general in spherical symmetry, but in for the Nash symmetry. And this is what we recently noticed and said. Of course, it, it probably is known, but it's, so I haven't seen this explicitly being done. So this is a paper by uh, as Mukherjee and myself. On the pure Gosvone nut black hole. Okay. In 6D, and that's the archive 2101, <clears throat> 029, 58. So I thought I, uh, that's, so that's one. Now, I don't know whether for this relation to whole, could we identify some, some symmetry of the space time or some, something which is uh, related to this? Or, so that's uh, one question. Another question which is connected to the not space time, but in the same paper we have said, has that all higher dimensional not space time you have, then the black hole topology is always a product topology and it's product of S2. So, so usually in four dimension, you have the horizon topology is S2. But if you go into higher dimension, the topology has to be product of S2. S2 cross S2 or, but it is always in, so they involve S2. And we were trying to ask the question, what is it? What property requires that, that, uh, the topology has to be S2 for uh, this. 
And then what we identified was this. The question, what we earlier I said is the radial symmetry. Now, by radial symmetry, I mean that the Riemann tensor is a function of R alone. So now if you take any uh, higher dimensional cell, let's say consider a 6D uh, not space time, and say if the horizon symmetry is S4 instead of, so you have an uh, T and R and S4 sphere as the symmetry, then the Riemann tensor will be function of both R and theta. On the other hand, if it is symmetry of S2 cross S2, then the Riemann tensor will remain a function of R alone. So the somehow the radial symmetry of not, not space time uh, picks up the S2 as a topology for the third horizon. And now that the discussion is whether this property can we more analytically find associated with some, can find some, some killing symmetries or something. Now this is all right for a man like me, but who, who is uh, analytically challenged, but more intuitive person. So saying that uh, uh, it's a radial symmetry, but one would more like it to, to have a more analytical identification of this, this fact that the, <clears throat> uh, uh, the horizon symmetry has always to be a product, a product of S2. It cannot be a, a, any S, S and sphere. Uh, <clears throat> so now these, these are the open questions we have. And I thought, uh, I don't understand them very well. Not very well, I don't understand them at all, except what I've told you. Uh, what, to, what one would like, uh, so one other, another my uh, crazy hunch, whether that has a few, so, which is not related to the more generalized uh, uh, question. And I thought I should bounce it here. And some of you might have an uh, answer or something we can look at. And that is to say that I, how about saying if I have a compact null surface, And my conjecture is then it has always to be a sphere. And if it is a sphere, well, I, what I'm saying is from this, can we not conclude a justification for no hair theorem? Now, this may be totally crazy and wrong. But I so thought this compact null surface is how many dimensional? I'm at the moment will say any dimension. But, but so, so we are talking about space, right? Yes. So this is what is the dimension of space, right? So let's say, let us start from the support down. So we are in four down. Then this compact null surface is three dimensional. Yes. And that sphere is what dimension? 
Sphere is good. So, so but uh, so what you okay, no, so no, 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 but you, no. So okay, I understand that. Uh, you will say, but we also want this to be a, a solution of the Einstein vacuum equation, right? So what I'm essentially saying is that black hole horizon is a compact surface. Now, if that has to be always spherical, then nothing you except for the mass, charge, and rotation, you can't put anything else on it. So I was look trying to ask question is alternatively. Can we understand the Nohefer theorem in terms of this very simple intuitive idea? May not be proposed, but I thought that so really uh, bounce it. Okay, so we consider horizons that are not over steam, but over the surface of the but then space time is not a scientific effect. Right. Then, then space time is also a right. That's right. So I'm saying, can we get a more intuitive uh, understanding of the no hair term? Why there are no more things you can put on the horizon? <laughs> Particularly, I would say that you see the the photon has zero mass, so it experiences no no force. It only for experience the geometry of the geometry of the space. And now, if the null surface has to be compact, then it can't have any other shape than, than, a, than a sphere. <clears throat> and whether from this we could uh, uh, say something of that, if I can understand this, can I understand that no hair theorem in terms of uh, this? So when you say that non surface is compact, you mean that it has compact sections? Six compact sections, that's it. Mm. I think. Thank right. you. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, most most of the time when I get to people are always worried because I use a blackboard and I will overshoot the time. But I try to keep. I try to say the minimum things which are essential to it. But we are used to blackboard. So Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I here, because in case of not space-time, when you the non parameter is not zero, then there are no spheres because uh, the typical structure of space-time is, is a bundle, but non-trivial bundle of a two-dimensional sphere, and there are no global sections. So, so this is the typical situation. So, so this not charge is nothing but uh, topological charge. Yeah. It prevents uh, for the space time to be trivial at infinity. No. So, so this it measures non triviality of this bundle. No. So, so, this is how it is. <laughs> but one can show where she starts and her flash pipe. So, next thing. Yeah. So, 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 roughly, there is no t equal constant, r equal constant slice. It does not, it is not a name. Yeah. So this space time that you wrote here, this is a generic curve. Yes. yes. So this transformation is it's a little similar to the transformation to those transformations which Newman used Human beings to produce curves. No, 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 no,
But in that case, this is not, this is not a symmetry. Yeah, okay. yeah. You, there you start with the non rotating thing, and then you are to go up. So, so here, so another observation thing. So another question here is this. Yeah, this is probably yeah. That's also I should say that you uh, you take your uh, uh, Schwarzschild solution, which is non-rotating, uh, then you try to find do the Newman genus. <laughs> Uh, trick and can you get the kernel and uh, really uh, I don't know uh, that, that's one of the you know, uh, it's the thing that you from um, <coughs> So in this case, you, you replace R by A cosine. Oh, so so the, 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 for that, there is a reason. So that is, that's the only the interesting part of this. Uh, because you see that for mass, the corresponding coordinate is a reaction tip or is a radian. For a uh, grow electric charge. Uh, where as for the grave magnetic chain, that magnetic thing, the extrinsic coordinate is a lambda. So when I'm interchanging, so when I'm doing interchange, I must interchange lambda. So that was very pleasing to see that this is, that, that's why the corresponding case, the coordinates should also be interchanged. One question? Yes. What about people on light? Okay. Why take do you hear us? Yes, yes, we hear. Okay. So no questions on your side. Yeah? Okay. So not, thank you again. Not interesting enough. <laughs>